Hello, now that you have mastered the basics of time value of money, we're going to explore the concept of compounding frequency. Compounding frequency is important because when we work with different types of financial instruments and different types of uh, financial problems, we'll encounter different compounding frequency. So first, let us uh, review what we mean by what the most frequent time period that you will encounter in finance. Uh, typically, uh, cash flow may occur on an annual basis or per year, quarter, month, day, and so forth. And from compounding frequency refers to how often is interest computed per year. So for example, let's take a look at credit card. Uh, most of us have to pay credit card at the end of each month. So that means our payment occur on a monthly, ba on a monthly basis. Uh, that is true for car payment, how, uh, rent, uh, mortgage payment, and so forth. Uh, dividend typically is pay on a quarterly basis. Um, if you're working with the cash department in a, in a company, uh, oftentimes you may be working with a daily balances. So a bank that has a business relationship with a firm, they may compute interest on a daily basis when the company deposits its uh, cash receipt at the end of each day. So that translate into a compounding frequency. For example, if you make monthly payment on your credit card, that's a compounding frequency of 12 times per year. So the compounding frequency will be 12. A special case is continuous compounding. We'll look at all of this uh, in here. Compounding frequency directly affects the actual interest that you end up paying a company. So before we go there, we need to take a look at how interest is typically quoted or reported. Um, by law, the, gov uh, or the government regulation requires companies to disclose the annual percentage rate, which is called APR. So this is the, as I said, this is the, re this is the rate required to be reported by law and therefore is most common. If you walk into a bank, you see the interest rate being displayed, that's the APR. If you get a credit card application, what printed in large, uh, large numbers is the APR, and this is what is being advertised as well. Unfortunately, APR is only used in calculation when the interest when interest rate is computed on an annual basis. So most, since most consumer, consumer products such as credit card, automobile loans, mortgages are not, um, interest are not computed on a annual basis, but rather on a monthly basis, the APR need to be um, augmented in order for us to be, find it, to use it. So, and, a interest rate that is closely related to the APR is called the EAR. EAR stands for the effective annual rate. It's called the effective annual rate because this is the actual interest rate that you end up paying or receive after you take into account compounding. The interest rate that the EAR effective annual rate is particularly important when you're comparing different investment or loans that have different compounding period. So if you have, um, most loans are relatively standardized, but investments are not. So if you're comparing investment that distribute dividend on a quarterly basis versus on an annual basis, then can make a difference. Lastly, there is the period rate. This is the interest rate that we'll use in our calculations. Simply put, period rate is the interest rate per period. So for example, if you are given a quotation of 12% APR, and the payment is monthly, then your interest rate per month is 12% divided by 12 months per year, or 1% per month. So keep in mind that 1% per month is the interest rate that we'll actually use in calculations if the payment is occurs on a monthly basis. Uh, lastly, just want to caution that we will, you should never divide the EAR, or effective annual rate, by the number of periods per year. That's because the effective annual rate already took into account compounding. Let's go through a few very simple basic uh, examples to uh, consolidate this concept between annual percentage rate, APR, and period rates. So if the interest rate, let's say, if you have a monthly interest rate of half a percent, what is the APR? So if you pay half a percentage once, APR is annual percentage rate, so how much is it per year? Simply 
So 12 minutes per year, half a percent per month. Similarly, semi-annual. Semi-annual means two times per year. So if you if the 4% 4, 4 interest rate every half year, every six months, then what is the APR? I'm sure if you get that, so that will be 8%. Let's try it the other way. Let's say the APR is 12% and you have a, a, in a loan that requires monthly payment. What is the monthly rate? Of course, 12% divided by 12 is 1% per year. Now you have mastered the concept between annual percentage rate and period rate. And we're going to look at effective annual rate next. The best way to understand effective annual rate is through an example. So let's say you have an investment that will pay you 1% per month on a dollar that you invest today. And interest is compounded on a monthly basis. First, let's check what the APR would be. So if it's 1% per month, then on a per year basis, the 12 months per year is 12% per year. If you are able to earn 1% per month, how much would that $1 that you have invested today grow to at the end of the month, of the year. So we know we invested 1%, $1 and we earn 1% per month. So the question is how much would that grow to in one year? So let's take a look at how we, how we will solve that on a timeline. So we will have a total of, so it's one year, but one year means there are 12 months. So this is important to remember. So we are starting with $1 today. So our present value is $1. And we'll invest this for 12 months. So N is 12. And we, our interest rate is 1% per month. So we can compute our future value. So pause the video now and do the calculation and see what you get. Did you get $1 or 1.1268? Good job. Since your future value is $1 and 12.66 cents, that means the interest that you earn is 12.68 cents. And if you look at the percentage return, you invested $1, uh, uh, you invested $1 and you earn 12.68% in interest. That means your actual return, your actual one year return is 12.68%. In fact, that is your effective annual rate. Now let's take a look at another example. I'm gonna have you try this, pause the video and, and see if you can find out how much you will earn on the similar account. So in this case, you're investing 3% per quarter and interest is compounded on a quarterly basis. So on an APR basis, they are the same. If you look at the APR, 1% per month for 12 months will give you 12%. 3% per quarter, and since there are four quarters per year, will also give you 12%. But would you end up with the same amount of money at the end of one year? So I'll draw the timeline and I'm going to ask you to work out the future value. So here we have, again, one year, but we are working with quarters. So there are four quarters in one year. So it's important to write the time period on your timeline. So there are four quarters and the present value is also one. The interest rate in this case is 3% because it's 3% per quarter. Notice how we are using the period rate in our calculation. So your job is to find the future value. So go ahead and compute that. Did you get 1.1255? Congratulations. So we saw that even though our APR is 12% in both cases, we end up with a different future value. In fact, we can also compute the, uh, the one year return on this investment. Uh, we started with a dollar and we earned 12.55%. So our one year return is 12.55%. So the takeaway on the, these two examples is that you can have two investments that have the same APR, 
So both of them are 12%, but can have different one year returns. And the difference here is due to the compounding frequency because one of them is compounded on a monthly basis and one of them is compounded on a quarterly basis. We can generalize this concept into a formula. So again, remember that a formula is just a shortcut. So to compute the EAR e, uh, or effective annual rate, all you need is the annual percentage rate and M is the compounding frequency per year. So if this is monthly compounding, M will be 12. If this is quarterly compounding, M will be four. So this is a good time to pause this video and write this formula sheet, uh, or write this formula down at the end of your notebook or your formula sheet. There's also a special case, and the special case is when compounding occur on a continuous basis. So a continuous compounding means that is more frequently than hourly, so interest is computed on um, every minute, every second, or even faster than that, and that is continuous compounding. Uh, this is the natural. Uh, this is E. So that all of you are in you in your financial calculator has this function in there. Effective, uh, the continuous compounding is particularly important when we are working with um, options. Uh, the option pricing model assumes continuous compounding. But in this introductory class, we will not be working with uh, options. But I want to introduce this to you so that you have seen it. And if you were and you were given continuous compounding, uh, you know what it, what it means. And we'll also work through a few numerical examples. In addition to the formula, you can also use the financial calculator to convert between effective annual rate and annual percentage rate. The function is called ICON, and I will show you how to use that in the example. Um, uh, but the name is different when you, um, on the calculator. So in the calculator, the abbreviation NOM, which actually stands for nominal rate, um, is equivalent to the annual percentage rate. And EFF, which stands for effective rate, is, is, um, is the same as the effective annual rate. And C slash Y, which actually stands for compounding period per year, is what in the formula represented by the letter M. So this is just um, notation. Again, I encourage you to pause the video now and put this on your formula sheet so that um, you don't have to memorize all these conventions. One thing that I want you to note is that you cannot use the calculator for continuous compounding. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples to try out both the formula and the calculator on how to compute effective annual rate and annual, and annual percent. So remember that the most um, important use of effective annual rate is the ability is that enable us to compare investments that have different compounding frequency. In this first example, we're going to look at an investment that has the same APR, which is 16%. So when it says 16% per year, that's the APR. But the first investment has semi-annual compounding. The second investment has annual compounding. Question is, which account should you choose and why? So in the first account, it pays 16% per year, but with semi-annual compounding. So we know that the APR is 16%, but the EAR will be different. If it's semi-annual compounding, the compound, that means the compounding frequency is two times per year. So that means M is two. So we can find out what the EAR is for the first account. So for the first account, the EAR is, we can first use the formula. If you don't have it handy, turn to your formula sheet. So this is one plus the annual percentage rate, which is 16%. Since we're using a formula, we need to convert the percentage to a decimal. And it compounding frequency is two times per year. So we can find out what the EAR or effective annual rate is. And in this case, it turns out to be 16.64%. In addition to using the formula, we can also solve this problem using the financial calculator. So remember that the function on the calculator is I convert. So this is the function that's located 
on above the number two. So this is a second function. So we start by using the second function key. So second function, I convert. So this is uh, in, in an entry, enter screen like this, in order for you to clear the entry, you first get into the function and then we'll do second function clear work. So notice second function is on the screen and we do clear work. They'll clear all the registry inside this function. So in this case, um, again, have your formula sheet handy so you can remember that NOM on nominal rate is the same as APR. So APR here is 16%. When you are using the financial calculator, we enter percent as whole number. So that's 16. In order to record this in your calculator, you have to press enter. So that's our nominal or APR. So we have the up and down arrow here. We'll press down arrow. This tells us the effective annual rate or effective rate. This is what we want to compute. So we'll bypass it and press the down arrow one more time. Here we have number of compounding period for year. Um, so again, this is a very, very large number. Uh, we don't want that. Our number of compounding period per year is two. So again, two, enter. Notice that you will change the correct num number of decimal places when your calculator has registered your entry. So to be, sh to be certain, we can scroll back to make sure that we have entered all the right numbers. So we have annual percentage rate, APR, or nominal rate of 16%. Compounding frequency is two times per year. We can scroll back to the effective annual rate. This is what we are computing. So all we have to do is press compute. Of course, we get the same answer is 16.6%. So you can use either the formula or the calculator to compute effective annual rate. Now let's take a look at the second account. The second account, it also pays 16%, but it has annual compounding. So what is this effective annual rate? It's 16%. We don't have to do any calculation. Think about why. Well, the answer is obvious because we are doing compounding once per year. So it's 16%. You don't get anything. You don't get any additional compounding you know, uh, within the year. So if you have to choose between the two accounts, obviously you would choose the first account because you end up having a higher interest rate. Um, Remember that this is a savings account, so you're receiving the money, not paying the interest. So if you have the same annual percentage rate, the answer is very obvious. The, high, the larger the compounding frequency, the higher the effective annual rate. If you're not certain, we can verify our answer. So let's take a look at, at uh, let's say we actually have money to invest. We put $100 in each account. How much would the account grow to in one year? So in the first account, if you look at the timeline associated with this account, remember that interest is paid on a semi-annual basis. So the $100 that you put in will actually earn two times or two interests. So the present is $100, but since compounding is done on a semi-annual basis, you actually will earn two interest payments during that time period. Even though your interest rate is 8% every six months. So remember that interest rate is 16% per, per year, but you get paid twice per year. So each time you get paid 8%. So your M will be two, your present value is 100, your interest rate is eight, you're computing the future value. So go ahead and compute that. Did you get $116.64? Awesome, congratulations. Now I'm gonna ask you to do it for the second account, which is very straightforward. You invest $100, you earn 16% in interest, so you end up with $116. We just verified that you end up with more money in the first account because you have compounding. Compounding is done on a semi-annual basis instead of an annual basis. So this, is, this concludes the effective annual rate segment of the lecture.